My appreciation goes to uh, Pastor Morgan and uh, Pete Hernandez and all of the board members for the Wounded Officers Initiative. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to be here to uh, have been asked to be your keynote speaker. Really, uh, Corporal Arizari kind of laid it out very well. There's not much that I could add, but I'm going to try to add a few comments. I'm really humbled to be a law enforcement officer in this community, and I certainly recognize the value and service of the brave souls who put on a uniform every day, who put on body armor and a gun belt to protect and serve our community. There are now more than 900,000 sworn law enforcement officers serving in the United States of America. Over 20,000 law enforcement officers have been killed in the line of duty. An average of 151 officers have been killed each year during the past 10 years. And during the same period of time, on average, 13,300 plus officers are assaulted each year. Those are the ones who live. Over 13,000 are assaulted and injured each year across our nation. The Wounded Officers Initiative was founded, as you heard, in 2014 by four active and retired law enforcement officers to bring awareness for the heroes who are sometimes forgotten and who have inadequate benefits to take care of themselves when they have been injured. Sadly, I, I have to tell you that across our country, benefits payable through workers' compensation vary by state. And sometimes those benefits fall short of providing for the true needs of our heroes. We have one here, former Deputy Sheriff Adam Pierce. Adam, wave your hands over here, who was uh, in the last year or so, our community has been through many tragedies. I remind you of June of 2016. A calamity of traumatic events began during that period of time for this community. They include incidents they required our law enforcement officers to respond to gruesome, horrific crime scenes that left them emotionally and physically scarred. They include the June 10, 2016 incident in which celebrity entertainer and singer, former Boys contestant, Christine Grimmett, was stalked and killed by a lone gunman. She was only 22 years old at the time. Our law enforcement officers in Orlando responded to that tragedy. Then on June the 12th, another lone gunman shot and killed 49 innocent people at the Pulse nightclub in downtown, in downtown, downtown, downtown Orlando. Now think about that, 49 innocent people. We have some veterans in the audience this afternoon, and many of them can tell you when they served in our nation's wars. That's a rare where you see that many people who are killed at one time. But our law enforcement officers and first responders have they had to endure that scene. Numerous officers responded to the incident and witnessed the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. The crime scene was gruesome and was difficult for any person to have to see. In fact, Orlando police officer Jerry Reeland was so emotionally impacted by what he saw that he was not able to return to work and has since been medically retired from the Orlando Police Department. I met him, I know him, 
He grew up with my sons. I've talked to his wife since the incident. And she believes that her husband will never, ever be the same. She believes that the workers' compensation for, for her husband is inadequate. Because, you see, Florida workers' compensation laws do not recognize mental injuries as being compensable without a corresponding physical injury. But fortunately for her husband, he received his pension from the city of Orlando but no workers' compensation benefits. As a state, Florida can do better than that. We can do better. Then on June the 14th, 2016, two-year-old Lane Thomas Graves was at Walt Disney World when he was attacked by an alligator. Just this week, the Graves family was in the national news announcing the creation of the Lane Thomas Foundation. The foundation was created to raise awareness about the need for pediatric organ donation. Lane's parents, Matt and Melissa, announced that the foundation will work in collaboration with the Nebraska Medical Center to help families with living expenses and other needs when they travel away from home in other states in support of their children going through organ transplants. These examples I'm giving you represent when a tragedy occurs, how something good can sometimes come out of it. In fact, the Wounded Officers Initiative is indicative of something good that comes out of the numerous tragedies that our law enforcement officers face across the nation. During the ordeal at Disney, I was proud of my deputy sheriffs who put on their scuba gear to dive into the gator-infested lake to recover the remains of Lane Graves. Those deputy sheriffs did so without hesitation. Then in this community, we endured the killing of Orlando Police Lieutenant Deborah Clayton, the tragic death of Orange County Deputy Norman Lewis on the same day in January of this year, and most recently, the killings of Kissimmee Police Sergeant Sam Howard and Officer Matthew Baxter. That's a lot that this community has gone through. Your first responders have responded to all of those events. What I'm suggesting to you is that law enforcement is a dangerous job, but one in which there are many heroes still willing to do the work. These men and women deserve our support. We must honor those who died, but we also honor those who live. The Wounded Officers Initiative helps us to do that. We need you, those of you here, to give and support this organization through your volunteer service and your financial support. I have seen the value of what can be accomplished when we all come together for a common cause. As a community, we are continuing to recover now from Hurricane Irma and others like those in the Caribbean are worse off than we are. As Americans, it is our duty to be of service to others. Together we can make a difference in the lives of everyday people. Once again, please join me in giving our first responders, police officers, firefighters, and EMS personnel 
a round of applause. Thank you. 